All right, we're going to walk through a demo of uh, automating the edge with Red Hat Ansible and Cisco Meraki. The end-to-end -end branch network lifecycle demo that we're going to go through starts with day zero site provisioning, moves on to day two operations. We're going to focus on moves as and changes of the infrastructure as code. And then from there, we're going to move into showing how we can leverage event-driven Ansible and event-driven automation to tie all of this together from an operational standpoint. So first up, what we're going to do from a demo standpoint is in this environment, from a demo architecture standpoint, everything is going to be driven from a GitOps type of workflow. But with this, it's going to be the Red Hat Ansible automation platform in front of the Meraki dashboard. And in our environment, the network that we're going to configure has a Meraki MX68 firewall, an MR44 access point, we've got a security camera, and an MT30 IoT button, which we're going to showcase as we use that to drive some of the event-driven use case. So the first thing I do want to highlight in this environment is that outside of the infrastructure being managed as code, we're also managing Ansible as code. So Ansible Automation Platform itself is managed via code. We run some playbooks, we pull in the data that's necessary, which will result in organizations, credentials, inventories, down through job templates and the surveys being provisioned and pushed into the controller, allowing us to manage this environment effectively. The bonus of this as well is all of the code to do this is, is available at the end, so you can get started and get this demo up and running very quickly. So with that, we'll get into it. The first thing I want to showcase is that with any Meraki network, the big thing that we have to do is if you make a purchase, you've got that sales order, that license key, we can claim that via automation and get that into the dashboard so we can start to provision this environment. So what that looks like is we run the claim Meraki devices a playbook, we feed it the license key, we click next. As you can see, this job is going to run, it's going to go out, it's going to claim that license, pull that license into the dashboard. We now have everything necessary in order to start provisioning this new site. From an operational standpoint, for many people, as they're building and deploying many of these edge networks, this is a key part of being able to do that. So next, what we're going to do is talk about the day zero site provisioning that we're going to go through. So obviously, first and foremost, if you're familiar with Meraki, uh, we have to provision the network. So we're going to create the network. We're going to assign our device inventory to the network, which allows us then to go configure the firewalls. When we configure the firewall, we're going to do the base appliance settings. We're going to configure the WAN, the VLANs, IP addressing and ports. And then lastly, we're going to turn on threat, protect, threat protection. We're also then going to configure the layer three and layer seven firewall rules. We're going to configure the access points. If you're familiar with Meraki, they always create a default SSID. The first thing we're going to do is remove that, then configure the base access point settings. We'll configure RF profiles, SSIDs. We'll turn up Bluetooth so that our OT button works. And then from there, we're going to configure the sensor. We'll push in the MQTT broker settings, which allows the button to work. And then lastly, we're going to configure the camera. So we'll set up the base settings, we'll configure the quality and retention settings, and then we'll configure the wireless profiles so the camera knows which network to connect to. So with that, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over and we're going to walk through this provisioning workflow. So if I go back and I, I look at Ansible Automation Controller and we look at the job templates, what I'm going to do is I have a configure Meraki network-ao job that I'm going to run. This is going to provision a different set of infrastructure than what I have running over here. And when I launch that template, it's going to do a few things. First, it's going to do a source control sync. It's going to pull down the latest data that, that drives and defines the state of what this infrastructure should look like. After it does that, it's going to start provisioning. So very quickly, while this is waiting, this is going to take a few minutes to run, I'm going to go through what we're doing from a playbook standpoint. When we look at the play, first things first, we're going to go and we're going to just run a, a handful of roles in order that account for all of those tasks that we talked about. So the www.meraki collection, which is published and open source and available on Galaxy, you'll see that we're going to go through through, we're going to manage the network. We're going to do the, the MX and the MR on down the line like we talked about. But when we look at the data that goes into this, whether we're looking at the networks themselves, where we define the name of the network, the organization that we belong to with Meraki, the types of devices that are allowed in this network, and then we outline those devices and what their serial numbers are. That allows us to claim them in. And then when we look specifically at the MX, and this is a great example of, of what the data does, we again, we are defining the device, we are provisioning and pushing in the VLANs into the environment. We are configuring the ports on the back of the firewall so that we can turn up for client access and have a trunk to the access point. All of those settings are, are applied here, managed as code. This environment itself, all of this is also type checked. We validate the data is good before we run the automation. And if we go back and we look at the we look at the controller, now we can see that this job is running. So as this goes through, we'll see that it's it's pushing configuration in, it sets up the VLANs, we're now working down the line, we're turning up the ports. 
This will take a few seconds to run, but one of the things if we look at this, if we go back to the Meraki dashboard, you'll see I only had one network to start. I'll reload this pane. And when we look, we'll see that second network coming in. So currently the devices are offline, but the configuration is there, it's being pushed in. If I switch over to that network, I have the ability now to go in and showcase that we'll see that the, for example, the firewall is defined, we have addressing configuration on the firewall, all of this information that was defined in that data is now pushed in. So this will take a, a little bit to run. So what we'll do is, uh, as you can see, this will continue to go. This job itself is now working through the cameras. This is just about done. That environment will be ready to go. It does take about 10 or 15 minutes before it comes online. So we'll move on to our other environment to showcase the day two operations. And yeah, here we go. Uh, we'll see now that this environment is fully done. Uh, all of the configuration changes are in and everything is finished. So uh, with that, now what we're gonna do is talk about day two operations. And so when we talk about day two operations, right, because this is managed as code, we're gonna use GitOps to manage this configuration of this site. So uh, as you'll see, as a network operator, I've got a copy of the, the repository cloned down to my workstation. I'm going to make change via data, push this into Git, go through a pull request process, and then from there, that will trigger the automation that runs and, and affects the change on the infrastructure. So what we'll do is we'll go, uh, we'll go take a look at that now. So if we go back, what we'll see is um, we now have inside Visual Studio Code the data for the Max firewall. So what I'll do, if we look at the ports, the port configuration, right, I have ports 3, 4, and 12 configured. I'm going to configure port 5, and we're going to put it on VLAN 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this data down onto port 5. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to VLAN 20. So port 5 will be enabled. Everything is, is looking good here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add that file. So into the staging area, we're going to commit that up. Uh, updated port 5 to VLAN 20 and enabled. And we're going to push that code up to, or we're going to push that data back up to GitHub. So one of the things that we're going to see here is if I go back to the Ansible Automation Controller and we look at jobs, what's happening is I pushed into GitHub, that fired the webhook that, Git, that GitHub uses to reach out to the Ansible Controller. And now that this is up and running, uh, what we'll see is that it did a, it's running a source control update. It's pulling down that latest data. But what we don't want to do, because that, that code didn't go to the mainline production branch, it shouldn't do anything, right? So uh, as this runs, what we'll see here is that now that that's complete, it's going to go run the, the, the template that it should, the job that it should to, to go push that into the environment. But we've accounted for that, we've caught that. So we actually said this, this code didn't get pushed into the main branch, I'm not going to run, I'm not going to apply that data to it. Because what I have to do is I have to go to Git and I still have to do, I have to create a pull request, I have to get this code into production. So we'll see that the devel branch had a push just a few seconds ago. And now when I look at this, right, I'm going to create a pull request from devel to main. If we go through and do this, we'll see that I updated port 5 to VLAN 20 and enabled, just like my message said. I'm going to create this pull request. So now this is, this is ready to, to be approved, right? Normally, I would, I would submit this, I would assign a teammate, they would, they would peer review this, say everything's good and approve and merge this pull request. But I'm gonna do that myself and violate those software development best practices because it is a demo environment. And I'm gonna confirm the merge. So now that change is moved from the development branch to the main. And now that that's done, what we'll see in the Ansible Automation platform is that job is running again. So now it's syncing down that data from the mainline branch. It's running the uh, automation that, that we need. So we'll give it just one more second here to go. And what we'll see is when it goes through this process, it's gonna take those configuration. The other bonus of this outside of using automation and, and being able to drive the change via automation, we're now going on a compliance run along the way, right? So as it runs this automation, it's validating that the state of the infrastructure matches what's in that data. And if it's not, it's gonna put it back. So as we look, that play is running. It's now going through and it's validating. Is everything done and configured in the way that we expect? So we'll see that it's now configuring and validating the WAN uplinks on down the line. But what it's going to do is once it validates the, the VLANs, now we're to the ports. And we'll see that port 5 scrolling by here. It was set on VLAN 5. Change was affected. If I go back to the Meraki dashboard and I switch to my other network and we take a look here, we can now go look at the port configuration. 
down the screen here and we'll see that port 5 is now an access port in VLAN 20 and it's enabled. It's ready to have a printer plugged into it. So that job will continue to run. But that is, the, that is the end of the day two operational side, using Ansible to drive the end-to-end -end life cycle, both provisioning and uh, operationally of this site. And next, what we're going to showcase is um, how we can leverage event-driven Ansible and event-driven automation to deliver an operations as code type of use case. Now, in this scenario, right, what I'm, what I'm going to do is because I have this Meraki MT30 button, I'm going to actually use this to kind of reset the demo environment and showcase some other things that we can do with the, the video camera in the environment as well. So we have event-driven Ansible itself is subscribed using an event source plugin to an MQTT broker running out in the public cloud. And that event-driven Ansible rulebook, if you're not familiar with the rulebook, right, this is going to be the difference from a rulebook to a playbook is a rulebook will run forever, right? It's subscribed to a specific topic from an MQTT standpoint, waiting for those messages to come across. So when it sees the messages that it's looking for that will come when I press the button, an MQTT publish will be sent from will be sent from the Meraki dashboard to that broker. And then we're going to act on that. We're going to match based on the, the button press. How long? Was it a long press or a short press? That's going to determine which AAP job is triggered. So if we do a long press, it's actually going to go tear down the environment that we just provisioned. And if we do a short press, it's actually going to kind of treat the video camera like it's almost like a doorbell. When I push this button, it's going to take a snapshot from the camera and it's going to send me an instant message with everything that we need. So now what we'll do is I'm going to uh, switch over and we're going to look at the event-driven Ansible controller. And when we, when we look at this specifically, uh, we have a rulebook activation here. We'll see that this rulebook is uh, running. It's been, been running for a while. It's out there waiting for a message to be sent, with the last one being sent with a timestamp of 1613. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a very quick short press button here. And we'll see in just a second that this will refresh as this button press goes through. And that's going to then trigger a, a job. So we see that uh, this, this is launched. We now see from 1629 that it's triggered the send WebEx Teams message. If we go look at the Ansible automation platform, or to the controller, excuse me, we'll see that playbook ran. So the send WebEx Teams message playbook ran. What that did, it went out to the dashboard, it found the camera, it took a snapshot, it then looked for the WebEx Teams room that we expected, sent that snapshot over, and if we take a look now at a WebEx Teams, we'll see I have a message. We'll see that I have a message specifically here of a snapshot taken from my demo MV2 camera. Uh, the cool part about Event Driven Ansible is the information that was used to trigger from an event standpoint. The contents of that MQTT message were available to me to pass through from an automation standpoint. So we see my triggering device was this MT30 button that I did a short press. I pressed the button for 0.2 seconds, and then that resulted in the, in the snapshot from the camera, which you can see here. And so the, the last thing that I'll showcase from an event-driven Ansible standpoint is we had that demo network, right? We want to be able to set this up and be able to do this multiple times throughout the day, like we're doing here at Cisco Live. And so when we look at this, I have that Meraki demo AO environment. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to hold down the button for a long press. Event Driven Ansible is going to pick that up. And we're going to see now that this is going to run a job uh, where if we reload this, it's now going to go tear down the environment that we provisioned, setting the demo environment back up so we can do this again. So we'll see that this runs. Give it just a second here for that source control update to go. And then from there, what we'll be able to see is when this goes through, it will go through the process of tearing down the environment. It will remove the network configurations. It will take the networks or the devices out of the network, put them back into our available inventory, and then tear down all of the constructs in the Meraki dashboard so that we can reprovision that environment. So we'll now see as this playbook runs that that will run through. That will, com that will then conclude the demo, uh, allow us that ability to, to set it up and run it again. All right, there we go. Now this is running. So it's gone through, it's discovered the devices, it's disabled the MQTT configuration, it's now removing the devices from that network, and then it will ultimately remove that network uh, from the dashboard as well as this finishes. And so with that, that is the end of the demo.